Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting rolling the dice and I'm sipping on some green tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are fire red, chrome yellow, Mars black, phthalo green, and titanium white. And of course you can switch those up as well. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number five round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes, and down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type of canvas and size and the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. So I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy here. I just loaded my brush with black paint. I'll, all I'm really looking to do is give myself a nice even coat of black paint throughout my canvas. I like to paint on my black backgrounds. Some um, artists like to use a, a canvas that is pre-primed with uh, a black color and that is totally fine if you want to do that using um you can purchase canvases that are that are already primed black the only thing with that is it is just primed black it's not the primer that is on those canvases that you buy with that are um, already black that's just a print primer which is um intended to be um formulated for the paint to adhere to the canvas. So it's not, the primer is not formulated to be the final layer of the painting. So if you do start with a black canvas um, that is manufactured with the primer on it, you'll wanna make sure that you either clear coat it after you're done or just make sure that you paint over the entire um, background with other colors. That um, the black canvas is really just intended to give you that dark undertone to um, to your colors if that's what you're desiring. But just make sure that you you um, paint it over with a clear coat if you have to, because it won't age the same way that the acrylic paint does. And as you can see, I'm just kind of going through, making sure that I've got a nice coverage on this. If you wanted to, you could also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. That'll give you a really nice, complete look to the, um, to the overall product or the overall painting. And then once I get it done, I just like to kind of go back and forth, left to right, to make sure that I have um, the same thickness of paint throughout the um, throughout the canvas and this also helps me if I missed any spots this helps me to ensure that I have a good shot of getting them all and then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the felt. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are green, yellow, and white. And I do wanna recommend that before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. 
or you can fun, find some kind of fun fanning method to get a dryer. You can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to be doing is I want my felt on this playing table to look like it's just going out of focus. I, so I, I want to have the green color of the felt, but I don't want to have clean lines around it. So I'm going to be adding my green color and then just letting it kind of fade out into the black. I'm not going to use white initially because I want the the green that I'm going to be using, I want it to be able to see the black from underneath so it'll have a little bit of translucency to it so it's easy to blend around the edges. So I'm not going to use white yet. I'll use that at the end to make a little light spot in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my phthalo green which is has a lot of a bluish tone to it and I want to add a little bit of my chrome yellow into it. So this to me is going to resemble a more realistic felt color than my phthalo green or any other green that I have in my arsenal of colors. So you might have one that is very um, good in a representation to you and might not need to mix it like I do, but this to me, the felt on the table is similar in color to this to, for, for my eyes. So once I've got it into the color that I like, what I'm going to do is I'm not using any white, I'm just going to use this color right now, and I'm going to start adding it into the area that I want. So I'm going to come up maybe about a, a third of the way up my canvas in through here, and I'm just going to start adding it in this long section going over to the right. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher on this left hand side and let it just kind of um, have a thinner layer as it's meeting that black, as it's meeting the blackness up on top. And you'll see as this dries, it's going to get a lot duller and darker because it will be taking on the blackness from underneath. So the thicker my paint is, if I have it nice and thick in the middle, that's going to be brighter because it'll have a better opacity to it. And then if I let my brush run out of paint along the edges, that's going to make it darker because it'll see the black paint underneath. So I'm just going to rub this out so it blends into the black paint as it's um, kind of dissipating. And I'm giving, trying to give it a pretty um, even edge to it so you can even kind of rub it in a little bit and you might find that it, it ends up way darker than you want so you might end up doing a second maybe even a third layer on top of it so I'm just going to kind of make sure that I I rub this out in through here and then once I've got the area on that is conducive to where I want to have it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a touch of white into the center of it. So that way it will, as it dries, I'll have a lighter area to it. So I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint. You can see I just have a itty bitty bit on my brush and I'm going to kind of go right in the center of this area in through here and then I'm just going to work it out like this. So again, it will end up darker as it dries. So I'm going to do this one layer. I will let it dry. And then if I feel that after it dries, it turned a little bit too dark, I will just do a second layer on top of it. And then once you've got this done, you, we are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our dice. I'm going to be using my chalk as my drawing utensil and my medium brush as my measuring utensil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of squares and we're going to connect our squares and by the time we're done we'll have some wonderfully three-dimensional objects that we'll be able to color in through the painting process. So I am going to um, have mine just flipping through the air so they can really be in any position. So once you see how I do it, if you want to put yours in a different position, you can certainly do that. So I'm going to start by finding the center of the top of my canvas, and then I'm going to come down about three inches, and I'm going to go over to the left, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. I'm going to make myself my first mark in through here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over about three inches to the left of that and up just a little bit, so somewhere in through there. Now I'm going to use my measuring tool to see how far or how 
um, what the distance is between those two. I'm using this because you might have made yours at a different distance than mine, so you can measure yours and see whatever length yours is. You can utilize that. Then I'm going to uh, make myself a diagonal um, it will be a diagonal line in a minute, but I need to measure how far down it is, so I'll put my little dot in through there. I'm going to do the same thing from the distance of this one, make myself a little dot in through there, and then I'm going to just make sure this last distance is equal to my, um, my marker. So these are about three inches apart. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my dots like this, and now we have a kind of tipped square like that. Then I'm going to make another square of equal size. So this was about three inches for me. So I'm going to come down at a similar angle from that and then just over to the right a little bit. So I'm going to have a marker here and a marker here. And then I can just kind of continue to travel down for, well actually let's make our, our one going in the vertical way. So similar angle to this over to here, give myself a little marker, similar angle to here to my marker, make it the same length, and then just make sure these are all of equal distance, and then I just connect my dots. So again, these ones should be at similar angles, and then the top one, the, um, the horizontal ones should be at similar angles from one another. And then you're just gonna connect your corners with diagonal lines like this. And all of these diagonal lines should be pretty similar in um, the angle to each other. And then I'm going to make myself another one over here on the right hand side. Again, you could have yours going in whatever direction that you would like. I'm going to have mine tipped again over here. So I'm going to come about from this corner. I'm almost halfway between here and the edge of my canvas and maybe a little bit below. So I'm going to start my first one right about here is where I'm going to have it. And again, I want my sides to be of equal distance to this one over here. So I'm going to have mine about three inches and you can put this at any angle that you want. So I'm going to have mine at this angle is going to be my first one. Then I'm going to have my second angle like this. So that'll be my second dot. My third angle should be similar to this one. So something like this. And then this one should just measure at the correct distance. And then I just connect my four dots. And again, these two sides should be similar angle. And then these two sides should be similar angle. And you could certainly whip out a ruler if you wanted to make sure that this was perfect, but totally up to you. So then the next one, again, is going to be similar you know, distance or length on my sides. So I'm going to have this one kind of below and to the left. So my first marker that I'm going to make is right about here. So this is about a third of the way up this line and to the right, just a little bit. So somewhere in through here. And then again, just keep getting my measurement from my, from my first line. So then when I do this one, I want to keep it at a similar angle to that. So I'm going to be somewhere in this vicinity. Then you can just do this one is going to be at a similar angle to that one, something like that. And then this one's going to be at a similar angle to that one. So something like that. And then just measure that last marker to make sure it's at the correct um, width. And then I go ahead and connect all of my four dots, making sure that they're at similar angles as the previous square like this. And then I just connect my corners. So I'm connecting my corners. And again, these connecting of the corners should all be at pretty similar angles. And that's all I'm going to do for my outlines. You can certainly adjust it as you see fit. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our dice. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using red paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to be out or um, painting right on top of my chalk marks. And then I'm going to be putting a little bit of a, a light layer um, on the faces or the sides of the dice. So my red paint is transparent or translucent, which is going to allow me to have great depth in this red because there's black behind it. So the thicker my red paint is, the brighter it will be. The thinner it is, the more the darker it will be because it will see the black underneath. So really what I'm initially or it, um, right off the bat going to do is just outline my um, 
my boxes that I've already created with my chalk. So I'm just going to go through both of these dice and give it an outline. So this is going to make the edges of my dice pretty bright and it'll allow you to be able to see the um, that this dice I'm going for a clean like a translucent or transparent dice um, that you can see right through it so that's why I'm opting to use this red and I'm allowing this outline to be visible on the inside of the dice because it's going to give it this great 3d um, effect that is really unique and fun to paint and it it's got some great characteristics to it. So I, f I figured what better place to use this, this process than on these 3D dice in through here. So I'm going to start just like that. I'm going to do the same. I got some red paint on my hand. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get it all over the canvas. So just wiping it off there for a second. So I'm going to do the same thing over on this one. Just going to um, keep my hand off of all of the chalk mark. It's hard when I'm, um, my hand likes to just kind of travel wherever it wants to travel. And with this chalk, I tend to get the, um, the residue of the chalk all over my canvas if I'm not careful enough. So I'm just trying to pay a little bit better attention here and get, getting this, um, line on here, just following my chalk lines and if you do have the evidence or the res the like residual effect of some of that chalk after you've um after you're done with this outline it's all right because we've got plenty of other steps that we're going to be doing to to make sure that that goes away and this of course is a great opportunity if you had any um little tweaks that you needed to do with your lines you could certainly do that now but we will, uh, you can clean up those edges at any opportunity. And then once I've got my, um, the outline done, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, give myself another layer here, but with not as much paint. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my, on my paper towel. And I want to decide what, um, boxes are going to be the front boxes. So for me, I'm actually going to have this box right in through here is going to be the front side of my box. So I want to, I, I want to keep that um, kind of knowledge so I don't screw up here. So this is going to be my front side, this big one right here, and then this is going to be the side, and this is going to be the bottom. So everything else is going to be inside and on the other side. So what I've, what I've got right now is just a little bit of red paint on my brush, and I'm just going to kind of rub it in on top of that existing outside square. So I'm not using a lot of paint, which allows you to be able to see that background line that I did a, a minute ago. So I'm just doing this on a, what I'll call the outside squares or the outside um, sides of my, of my dice. So I'm going to do the same thing in through here. And again, you don't want to have a lot of paint on your brush, just a little bit. And then you just kind of rub it in on top. So that way you'll have the, um, the illusion of it being see-through and you'll be able to see that other red line that you put behind there. And then I'm going to do it on this top side as well. So I've got my little bit of red paint. That was probably a little bit too much. <laughs> a little bit of red paint and then I'm just going to kind of color in this top side. Again, allowing for that um, back side to, to show. And we'll be able to, as we're doing future details, this will come more to life and we'll be able to, we're going to be adding many more details on top of it, but that just kind of gets us started so we understand the, the process of the box. So this one over here, I'm going to have this top box is going to be my outside. This one over here is going to be my bottom left side, and this one's going to be my bottom right side. So you can start anywhere that you'd like, just having not much paint on your brush and then just kind of rubbing it in on those exterior um, boxes so something like that I've got this one in through here so I've got just that little bit of red and I'm coloring in this box here and you know you might find that through this process that you depending on what kind of paint you're using you might lose one of those back lines and if that's the case one of these back lines in through here if that's the case you can always um, 
it, you can always re-identify it just with another layer of paint. And then I just reloaded my brush again with my red paint to get this top um, one in through here and then just coloring in my box and just r using more of a rubbing type of technique so I can see through it. And again, if any of those background lines get lost, like this one in through here kind of um, disappeared a little bit, I'm okay with that. I can always just go back and identify it later or right now if I wanted to. I just put a little bit more red paint on my brush just to re-identify that. And then we're gonna be using our, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadows of our dice on the felt. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are red, and I might use a little bit of black and or my felt color if I feel that I need to, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna need them yet. So these dice are translucent or transparent, so whatever the light source is, is gonna shine right through them. So on their shadow, the shadow can take on some of their color as well. So that's why I'm gonna be using red. So I'm gonna start with some red paint on my brush, not a lot. Um, I'm just gonna kind of plan myself out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these really elongated um, rectangle square type of shapes. They're gonna look like long diamond type of shapes. Um, because they're on a flat surface, so they're gonna be skewed. So I've got my red paint on my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of pull it out as far as I want, need a little bit more red paint on my brush, and then I'm gonna create this long type of um, shape that to me represents this only in a skewed fashion on the surface below. So you could use kind of whatever um, type of brush that you want to, to get this on here. I'm just getting it on and then I'll just rub out those edges and get the, um, the edges to be maybe on the softer side like they're kind of blending in with that um, felt a little bit. So just utilizing a rubbing type of technique on those edges and you can even put a little bit of water on your brush to um, soften those edges so they're not super crisp. And then I just kind of blend it out until it uh, is the, the thinness that I want, getting it to blend in with that felt. And if I needed to, I'm gonna let this dry, but if, I, if as it's drying or once it's dry, I feel like I wanna dull down the red or amp up the red, I can certainly bring in a little bit of the, um, of the felt color to dull it down, or I can bring in a little bit of black to, um, to make those edges more of a darker shadowy type of color. So I'm gonna just let that settle for a minute because I know it's gonna get darker as it dries. I'm gonna move on to the other one. So I'm gonna have this one in this vicinity. I think I'm gonna drop the point a little bit below this one. So somewhere about here. And then again, just giving myself this long um, representational shape that will make my painterly eye happy as I'm, as I'm trying to represent what that object is up top. And then again, just kind of taking this paint, rubbing it in so I've got some soft edges as it's touching the, the felt of, the, of whatever this surface is that it's casting the shadow upon. And this is looking pretty good. I think I might add a tiny bit of black paint maybe over on this one. So I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black with a little bit of water on my brush just to get maybe these edges a little bit darker and mute that red just a little bit so the red doesn't um, steal the focal point show of the, of the painting. So I don't want this red on the felt to be too overpowering. So I just dulled it down a little bit with some black and this one's pretty good to me over here, but I think I'll put a tiny bit of black just to um, emulate what's happening over there. And then you can tweak it as much as you want. If you felt that the edges needed to be smoothed out, like I feel like this needs to be a little bit smoothed out, you can pick up your felt color, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm picking up that, um, 
that green and yellow mixture that I had and you can always just soften those edges with that color if you felt that you know that would help to to make it look more believable and then once you've got this done we will be using the same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the backside dots on our dice. <laughs> so these are going to be the dots because these are see-through dice. They're going to be the dots that are on the other side of the dice. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using yellow and red paint. I pre-mixed myself an orange color which will be great behind um, these behind my red color. So I just took a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and mixed it together. So once you've got your orange color, maybe a little bit more yellow in through there, once you've got the orange color that you want, um, I have already, I've marked off my dots because I knew it would be a little confusing for me. <laughs> so I had to mark them off. So I have, I know what the um, numbers of dots on the front boxes are going to be, so I had to mark. I had to figure out what the opposing dots on the other side would be. So in order for me to not get confused, I did pre-mark um, mine. You could certainly do the same on yours. Just get grab a, a dice and look and see what numbers you want to have. So this box in through here is going to be on the far side. It has five. Um, five numbers or five dots on it. So I'm just rubbing in this these uh, oval type of shapes, trying to keep it kind of symmetrical, knowing that you would be seeing this from the side would make them look more oval than circular. So I also have on this box in through here, I have six dots. So again, I'm just gonna kind of rub in these oval type of shapes, trying to keep it pretty um, symmetrical, but these are going to be such a minute um, little detail that if you, if yours aren't perfect, it's it's going to be totally fine. I don't think anybody's going to really call you out on it. And then I have this box right in through here. This one will be on the far side, and this one has three. And this one's more kind of dead on or straight to us, so I would do this one more in a circular type of fashion. And again, because my... Um, my paint is translucent or transparent, it's going to show all, you know, it, it'll be darker on the dark one or it'll show some of that red behind it or what will be kind of in front of it by the time we're done. And then this one, those, those look pretty good to me. And again, they don't have to be perfect, just something that is gonna be representational. I'll move on to this guy over here. So uh, this I, I have this side in through here, and this one is also going to uh, get, let's see, let's do this one first, because I can see this one, and it's got three. <laughs> so I've got one in through here, and this one's a little bit on to the side, so one, two, three, like that. And then I have this big box down here, which I can see has two, so I have one, in through here and this one's going to be almost pretty um, straight on to us so these can be on the bigger side one and two like that and again I'm not going for perfection here and this one has six I can see it now <laughs> so it's gonna have one like this and it's very oblong because it's to the side we're seeing it from the side one two three and then one two and three and then you can certainly fiddle with it all you want you, you can do another layer if you want them to be more visible and then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be putting the highlights and shadows on the front side of the dice i'm going to use my small brush i'm going to be using primarily red white and black and actually, I'm going to use a little bit of my um, my felt color as well, that green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just make sure I have my head on straight and understand what the front side is. So for me, this big box here is the front. This one uh, here is the front. And then this one here is the front. And then on this side, this one is the front. 
this one is the front, and then this one is the front. And I'll walk you through it. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm putting some red paint on my brush. I'm going to illuminate this top box in through here with some extra red. So I have red on my brush, and I'm gonna start up in this top left-hand corner, and I'm just rubbing it on. So this, in essence, is making this top side brighter than the underside or than my sides that I'm gonna be doing in a minute. So I'm just taking red paint, rubbing it on, and trying to keep a little bit of, you know, that background still showing, but I do definitely don't want to overdo it where I can't see underneath there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just enhance some of these corners on my front side. So this way I can uh, make sure that they are brighter than the ones that were on the back side. So something like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush to accentuate some of these corners. So red with a little bit of white paint uh, both on my brush at the same time. I definitely wanna have a nice bright corner over in through here. So this is red plus white on my brush. And you can have rounded corners or really square corners. Whatever visually works for you is totally fine. But whatever you do on one corner, you wanna kind of hold true to that on the other corner. So I think I'm gonna do mine on the rounder side. So something like that. And if you do have a little square corner, you can always make it round by bringing some black to, um, to round it out with uh, along that edge. And then, so this is looking pretty good. I've got a nice highlight in through here. Maybe just bring this down a little bit on this side. And still got the red plus a tiny bit of white on my brush, just giving myself these brighter corners in through here. So it looks like we've got some great dimension. Just be careful of the white because what happens with the white is it will change the opacity where you won't be able to see through that red paint anymore. So you just want to be a little bit cautious. I'm going to put a little bit more red paint on this side over in through here. I want it to definitely look a little bit brighter in through here. So I just added a bit more red. And then on this side in through here, I'm going to add maybe a little bit more red up in through here. And just, you know, you can elevate this into as bright as you want it or as dull as you want it. I'm leaving some of that darkness there so this looks a little bit like the underside of it. I just picked up a little bit more white on my brush to accentuate this corner as well. And this is one of those processes that, you know, once you get into the groove of doing these highlights and shadows, you might want yours way brighter than mine. Maybe you want it to look like there is more light being cast upon your dice than I'm having on mine. And then once I've got that done, that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna actually bring in a little bit of my um, felt color. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm picking up a tiny bit of my felt color and just a real tiny bit on my brush and I'm just gonna give myself a little hint of it right in through here. And I'm wiping my brush off, picking up a, a little bit of water just to kind of rub that in, in through here. Maybe a little bit of white too, just so it will show up a little bit more in through here. And I'm just gonna kind of rub it out so it almost just looks like a, a little hue on the edge of this dice that is just because the dice can be shiny. So that's looking pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same exercise over here on the left-hand side. So I'm just gonna pick up some red paint just to make sure that I have my sides in order. So this is gonna be one of my front sides in through here. So again, just another layer of the red paint is and rubbing it in so it still remains translucent or transparent making sure this edge has a good amount on that something like that this is also a front side in through here so just again more red on my brush and just rubbing this in so you still see those you know the the back side um, information but again it doesn't have to be a hundred percent coverage you can leave a lot of darkness in through here this one doesn't have to be as bright as that one and then I've got this one this uh, box down in through here so just a little bit uh, I'll make making sure my edges are bright enough in through here and then maybe just rubbing it 
out just a little bit so it doesn't need to be as bright as the, you know, maybe this side, maybe this side has the most light on it. Now I'm gonna pick up some red and white on my brush and give these, um, these corners the highlights that they deserve. So red and white is going on these, these corners. And you might find that you want to do, you know, m more shadowing, so to speak, than I'm doing. If you feel that, you know, your area in through here is too bright, you can add a little bit of black into that um, darker interior of the, of the dice. That's gonna be up to you and where your comfort zone is as to how um, light or dark that you want it to be. But right now, I'm just kind of going around my corners, making sure that they are as bright as I want them to be. Maybe this kind of wraps around this corner. And then I'm uh, wiping my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more red just to make sure that this highlight um, works the way that I want it to. And again, if that white gets away from you, just keep washing and drying your brush because that's that'll work that white off of your brush. And you, the again, the white will be uh, change the opacity of this. So if you're finding that you're not able to see through it anymore, that means that you probably incorporated a little bit too much white. I'm digging how I'm seeing through this one a lot, so I'm just gonna kind of um, make sure my edges are the way that I want them. I think I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of black just to clean up these edges. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black just to kind of round out my edges wherever I want them to make sure that they're rounded out or take care of any pencil or chalk mark that I had. And then I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of that felt color at the bottom of this front piece in through here. So wash and dry my brush again, similar to how I did here. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that felt color and rub it in down at the bottom side of this piece of the dice in through here and maybe just a tiny bit of white paint itty bitty bit and just kind of rub it in. So again, it can incorporate like a shine of that felt up onto the um, up onto the dice. And then I just kind of, with a little bit of water, rub it in so it gives it a nice glow that it's shining from, from that table, which I think is a pretty cool um, effect to have. And then once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want. We're gonna be um, using the same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat of the dots on the front side of the dice. <laughs> That was, a long, that was a long name for that stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using black and white. I'm gonna pre-mix myself a medium gray uh, color and I'm just gonna color them in with that. We'll do the highlights and shadows in a, a future step. So this is the gray color that I'm going for. All I did to get there was mix a little bit of white with a touch of black and just got myself a medium tone. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color as mine. Yours could be lighter or darker. Whatever you're comfortable with is totally fine. So once you've got the color that you want, we're just gonna make some dots. Um, you could certainly do any number combination, but if you're following mine, I've already marked it out again so I don't lose my place. <laughs> you could also mark it out with your pencil, um, Anything that will help you to get them in your your order works totally fine. I'm gonna try and keep them kind of symmetrical, um, like a like a actual dice is. But if they go a little awry, that's okay. It's just painting; it doesn't need to be perfect. So I've got my my gray paint on my brush. I'm gonna start on this one first. And again, this is my front my my front square, my front square, and my front square. So this one I'm gonna have a um, a single dot in the middle. And again, because I'm seeing it from the side, it's gonna be a bit of an oval type of shape. So I've got that on in through there. And I'm gonna go a little bit slower on these so I can try and get them pretty much the way that I want them. And then I've got four dots on this one in through here. So I'm gonna start with this one in through here and just give myself a circle -y, a circle. This one's almost head on. Um, so this one could almost be a pretty good uh, representation of a circle. And then I'm just gonna try and make it a similar 
type of size in through here, something like that will work. And when we do the highlights and the shadows, if, if your um, marks are not exactly as you wanted them to be, you can certainly morph them a little bit through the highlight and shadow type of process. So I think this needs to be up a little bit, something like that. That works for me. Maybe this needs to be a little bit bigger <laughs> through here. You might find that your dots get a lot bigger as you start to adjust them <laughs> to make them in the size that you want. But again, if you want this to be perfect, you could certainly plan it out. You could um, use a, um, you know, print out a, a, a set of dice in a specific um, angle that you want and you could just trace these little circles on here if that uh, made you feel better or you can whip out a ruler and do it really mathematically correct. So whatever works for your painting needs you can certainly do. And then uh, this bottom side has two so I've got and again this one's going to be at an angle so I've got one in through here is going to be this one and I'm kind of watching like the width of this one to see if I can get it of a similar width because that would make sense to me. So there's one and then I've got another one down in this corner and you know just trying to see if I can keep it symmetrical. If I can, great. If not, I won't lose any sleep over it. Something like that. There we go. And then I'm going to go over to this one. So this one, this top side, I have five. Um, five dots so I'll just start with my one in the center and of course this one um, is almost facing us so I'm going to do this one more on the the my my shapes are going to be more on the circular um, form formation as opposed to oval or at least that's the way I'm going to attempt to do it <laughs> so this one's looking pretty good to me there and then I've got uh, this one down in through here and again if I'm just going, I'm just eyeballing this, putting them where, I, you know, where they are symmetrically in my, in my head right now and, or in my visual um, way. But if you needed yours to be perfect, again, slow down, mark it off. You can, you know, use thinner paint too, which will allow you to um, have smoother lines and be able to make corrections. Um, because it'll be more translucent and you can use that red along the edges to make any adjustments. That's looking pretty good to me, or we'll call it good enough for me. So that's, there we go. And then I've got this one over here has one dot. And again, it's going to be of an oval type of shape because we're seeing it from the side. And you could also use a smaller brush too, if you need your, your um, edges to be cleaner than I need mine to be something like that and then this one's got four dots so again just in the in the corners and this one's going to be a little bit on the oval side trying to keep them about as wide as this one is up in through here or similar I should say <laughs> and then we've got this one in through here well this one probably could have used to be a little bit closer to the corner but that's okay again we're just painting we're having fun and then I've got these two in through here. So once you've got your, um, your dots done, or at least this layer of them, definitely you know sit and fiddle with them until you're comfortable. I will probably adjust mine a little bit, but we will be using this same uh, brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the dots on the front sides of the dice. So we're going to be putting our highlights and our shadows on these front dots. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are white, my gray, black, and my felt green. So what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to put shadows on first. I'm going to assume that my light source is over in the top right, which is why we've got shadows down here. So if these dice were turning about, I think that the, for this particular dice, this side would be nice and bright of this um, dot. These ones would have a bright spot on the left. 
And then these ones underneath are not gonna have much of a highlight at all because they're on the underside. And then on these ones, this bottom right side would have, uh, or the bottom left bottom-ish side would have the highlight. Uh, over on here, not much of a highlight. We'll be doing some shadows to add a little bit of depth into them, but not much of a highlight. And then this one might have a little bit in through here. So I'm gonna start with my shadows, which are will be on the opposing side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, my gray plus a tiny bit of black paint. So what I'm doing is I'm making myself a darker shade of gray. I don't need this to go all the way black. I just want it to have a good dimension within these um, within these dots so they look like they're dipping in. So I have a little bit of that darker gray on my brush and I'm not gonna bring this all the way to the edge of this section. I'm just gonna kind of give myself this curved line up in this top right hand corner of it. So I've got this and I'm just gonna bring it in this curved line in this top right hand corner. And if you wanted to, you could add a little bit more darkness by just adding a little bit more black. I just picked up a little bit of black to give it a little bit more deep darkness and you can even blend it out a little bit. So I just uh, put some water on my brush and you can blend it into this, this center gray area. So if you don't want to just have a line, you can take it and just kind of blend it into it a little bit. That'll give you more of a gradual shadow um, in it. I'm going to do the same thing to uh, this top side because it's of a similar to me kind of angle, but it might be a little bit shorter of a shadow. So I'm going to just kind of put this up at the, um, up at the top in through here something like this and again this is my dark gray that i'm using up in through here so whatever you choose to do on one side of the dice you want to just do it um, similarly in all of those specific dots and then i'm just going to add a little bit of water onto my brush and just rub this into the center a little bit of that um of that dot just so i again just don't have a firm line to it. It gives me a little bit more leeway for that shadow or the d the dimension of that um, section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put some white paint on my brush and I'm going to add some little bits of highlights on these. So for this one in through here, this one's going to be pretty darn bright, probably the brightest one because it's facing the light the most, and I'm just gonna bring it along. Oops, that was in my red. <laughs> my, br my brush flicked away from me. So just bringing a nice kind of white highlight around the edge of that. I'm gonna do the same thing over on here. So just my white paint right now. I'll get it to blend in in a second, but a little bit of white on this bottom left-hand side of these. And then what I can do is I can either add water to my brush or I can add my um, my, lighter gray color to get this to kind of blend into that center area. So I think I'm actually going to just pick up some of my gray on my dirty brush and just get this white, the little highlight to blend in just a little bit. It doesn't need to be much and that way I'm picking up just a little bit more white so I can <laughs> get this to blend in. Um, so you can do the gray and a combination of white if you want to, if you want that line to be a little bit softer. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same thing over on these ones. So just pick up a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna give myself this highlight over here on this bottom side, bottom left kind of, and giving same kind of swipe to all of them. So starting in this top area or the middle area and then just giving it a similar curve. And this is gonna just give you that 3D type of look to it, maybe push your brush a little bit harder on that bottom side. Then I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of water onto my brush to get this to blend into that center area a little bit. So just rubbing it up into that center area. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. That'll just, again, give you that bit of, um, bit of look to it. I'm gonna put a little highlight on this one too. So a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little highlight down on this bottom side in through here. And then I'm going to put um, a little bit of water on my brush just to get this to blend in a bit in through here. Now I'm going to tackle these, this bottom side in through here. So I'm going to actually use a little bit of that dark gray to um, give myself a big center 
in here. So pretty uh, big area I'm going to go for in the center of these ones like this because it's really down far um, on the other side of the dice. So this makes sense to me. I'm going to do the same thing over on here. So it's my dark gray. I just put a little bit of water on my brush as well. So maybe this side isn't quite as dark as that one. And maybe this one gets a pretty good amount of it in through here, just darkening up those centers. And again, each side of the dice is going to take on the highlight and the shadow a little bit differently, just depending on the side of the wherever that light source is and the light source is way over on the other side of these ones so I'm just utilizing this darker color. Now I'm going to um, pick up some of my felt green so a little bit of that is on my brush and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of it in the um, the edge of these um, dips <laughs> in the dice so maybe a little bit in through here maybe it's reflecting a little bit and then just put a tiny bit of water on my brush and just brush it out. And if it was too green for you, you could certainly just pick up some of your gray um, and just blend it in with that. And then I would just wait for it to dry, see if there's any little adjustments that I would want to do to it. And then we have one little step left to go and it's gonna be with this small brush. So once you've got this done, maybe a little bit of this remnants of green right on and that's yeah that's good um we're going to use this small brush for the next step so you can just get ready all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right i'm going to use my small brush i think i'm going to go uh bottom bottom left on this one i'm using my felt color and I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool painting with some interesting perspective. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.